these mines. Good save, or you'd have gone through the hopper. <laughs> Alright, we're up here in the Ochico National Forest with Connor. And uh, we got the track jeep because Connor's truck is stuck way up the mountain here up by an old mine that's up here. We need to go check out the mine, so that'll be fun. Um, today is Tuesday. Your truck's been stuck since? Uh, Saturday. Saturday. And the good news is all the tire tracks come up the road to here through the snow and turn around. And uh, there's nothing beyond this point. So I bet your truck's probably still just fine because it is like sitting across the road. So we got the track jeep warming up. Gonna get it unloaded and then head up to the mine. Yep, all good to go. Let's we'll see what we get into. So I forgot my fancy 360 camera on a stick. Well, actually, I remembered the stick. I forgot the camera, so you don't get any of the cool, like, outside 360 shots on this one, which sucks because this would be, like, a beautiful spot to do it. about the sound in the track jeep I know I'm here too and there will never be good sound in the track jeep because it is very very loud so deal with it of the first ridge and we're headed down the other side the mine is down here so we've got all this uphill to come back out of on the way out and it's definitely snowed a lot more since he went in so yep. might have to pull you up some of this we'll see yeah so if you're wondering how deep it is there's a sign there's the old mine house Trying to turn around? Yeah, I'm trying to get out this way. Turn around and get back out. Yep. Okay, let's go uh, take a look. All right, let's see if it'll start. This snow is powder, powder. Yeah. Well, that makes things easier. Yeah. All right, let it warm up for a bit and uh, see what we want to do here. So we got tow hooks on the front, but they're, you know, of course, around the side and in the bumper. So I kind of think what I might do is go over there and get right here yeah. so I can get to your tow hook without pulling into your bumper yep. and winch your front end that way yeah. far and like spin you around right here far enough that I can then hook on with the Yankum rope and pull you up the road there. Yeah. And then once this is out, we're gonna go explore the mine. Perfect. Sounds good. Because isn't that the whole reason you're up here? Yeah. So let's at least do that. Yeah, yep. Deep one. So, am I totally wrong if the road comes out right here, maybe? I don't know, I haven't been here in the summer. I think, um, 
I would assume so. Because if the road actually comes out right here, this might be the culvert and the ditch right here. Okay, yeah. And that's why all of a sudden I drop in. Maybe the road goes like that to the old mine. Yeah. In this, it's chunks of solid ice. So that might be a culvert and a road right here that we can't see. Look how it's breaking. Yeah. Yeah. The whole, it's like a shelf right here that's breaking away. I bet this is all ice under this. There, there's water under that. It's a oh. layer of ice like this, and then there's water underneath I dropped into. That's why that's so bad right there. That's got to be the culvert. Yeah, yeah, uh, it has to be. But backing out of that just showed the value of tracks. Yeah. Because <laughs> that was a tired vehicle that over there. Screwed. No way. Yeah. We just make sure we miss where the valve stem is. And then the reason I use these flat straps for this, instead of the ropes or anything, is they're so flat and thin, they pass the brake rotors on pretty much every vehicle out there. So yeah. the tire can spin and turn and it won't get hung up. Oh, smart. I like that. So you hop in and you're gonna put it in reverse okay. and take the parking brake off and just not give any throttle. Jeep sitting up there with that beautiful backdrop. We're gonna put a load on this since it's probably frozen in. You might have to give some throttle to help break it free and spin it. That thing is going to dig in. Perfect. Give a little throttle. Perfect, a little more. That just helps it break free of that ice where it's frozen. Yep. And watch the bumper, make sure we're not crunching anything. That doesn't want to stay still. Okay, put it in drive. Let that wheel do, do what it wants to do, but give a little throttle. A little more. You're only in two wheel drive. Yeah, put it back in neutral. Some reason four wheel high won't even activate. Okay. So, well, uh, just leave in that auto. Okay. Well, four wheel drive not activating. It just it won't go, so we'll just have to pull harder. Put it in drive and give some throttle. There it goes. Yep, keep doing that. Okay. Yeah, your other one kicked in now. Okay, now stop. Put it in reverse. And go ahead and back up some as I pull. Yep, give it some throttle. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. There we go. Okay, stop there. Put it in park. I'm going to see if I can get your tow hook now to pull the front end around.
Helps if you lock it. Put it in drive. And then as I start to pull, you turn this way. Now give a little throttle. Perfect. Okay, let me let off some. Now hit your brake. See if it'll slide your front end over. Hold the brake. There we go. And keep your wheel turned this way. That's dragging his front end to the side to get him back centered in the ruts and not in the snowbank. That poor witch. Okay, let off the brake and turn towards me. All right, give a little throttle and see if you can pull up here on your own. Perfect, put it in park. You feeling better yet? Oh yeah. <laughs> let's back up here and make sure you can get up the road and then let's go check out this mine. Yep, sounds good. So this is an old uh, mercury mine, if I remember correctly. I don't remember the year. Uh, me and the family came up here not last summer, summer before, and explored this whole place, you know, in the summertime. But it looks completely different in the wintertime. Why people graffiti something way up here like this? Watch that first step. Yeah, you gotta be careful. You know, chimney. I'm sure there's a lot of stuff on these walls that is not appropriate. And, uh, oh well. If you don't like that part, don't watch this part. So, I don't know, buildings were built way different for this scenario because it was like bunkhouse living. So, there might not even have been a kitchen in this house. It could have been like an outdoor setup. Yeah. Maybe over there where they had the fire anyway because they had the burner over there for the mercury. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense to be like the whole cookhouse over where they're already having like a 24 seven fire. Yep. This was the doorway into the, under the stairwell. I will put down below like uh, what years this mine was operational and all that. Um, this looks safe. Watch uh, up there. <laughs> I've read up that uh, upstairs was a, uh, was a brothel. So that's what. Well, it says Devil's House right there, so that totally makes sense. <laughs> Let's go look at the mine. Yeah, sounds good. Here. <laughs> yeah. There's this is where it gets pretty sketchy. There's a hole here. <laughs> it's cool. This building's still standing here, though. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, yeah, see the ditch? That, look at that though, look at it. Here's the ditch that you just broke through. Follow it right down here. It goes right to where I broke through in the track jeep down there. Yep. So this is all that I was in the drainage and that's gotta be a culvert right there is why I fell into that. So I have some snowshoes in the track jeep I keep in there in case I have to like hike out of somewhere or something if that jeep breaks down. But um, look what this is doing. Yeah. 
look at it's it's breaking all the way around like it's that it's a crust with nothing under it yeah look at how big of a breakthrough it makes crazy. yeah just waiting to hit the big hole where you plummet oh here it is this is the mine processing building the snow like we keep breaking through this is the blue ridge mine i think what makes the most sense is to get in the building go to the top and go through the process on the way down so we'll do that making it yeah okay so we're in the mine building now we can go up through the building to the top to the hopper and kind of show you the process as far as i understand it went okay so we're up at the top now up here is where they actually mined these are all some spoils piles and there's holes in the ground where they're digging and fun fact right up there's a road he goes way up to the top of the mountain out there and that very same Jeep I'm driving right now, on tires, of course, me and my wife and my daughter went way up to the top, went for a hike and got back and it decided it didn't want to start. It wasn't picking up fuel for some reason. It wouldn't have any starting fluid. What we did to get it to start is took the intake off and poured hand sanitizer down it. And it actually started on the hand sanitizer and then picked up and ran on the gas and we were able to get out of here. This is a very remote spot but anyway mine the carts would come down here right off of this and dump into the hopper i don't think it's gonna be wise to walk too far out this would not be able to see but um so they came out to here that's all like tin hopper well they dumped all the ore right there and then do I risk going straight down this? And does it drop like? I would. I'm, not gonna wait right now. I'm going for it. Go. Hold on. You're gonna fill them that way. Nice, yeah, it should be rolling. Yeah. Perfect. That way, if I just fall into a pit and disappear, it's on camera. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, that wasn't so bad. Yeah, no. Good catch. <laughs> oh, you found the pit too. There you go. Okay, so like I said, carts came here, dumped into this hopper. It's wood sided and then lined with tin so that the ore slides into it. And now uh, that board's covered in nails. Watch out for that one. And we'll get back inside the building. So that comes through the hopper, first stop is the trommel screen. This screen would spin around. You see it had water being dumped into it to flush everything through. And it went out that way. It's so slippery on this floor. So as it went through the trommel screen, the small stuff, which would be like any precious metals like gold, um, silver, uh, what the mercury, which is, I, I yeah. believe this was for, cinnabar. is all going to wash through. Yes, cinnabar mines. That's there. Cinnabar mines. Cinnabar mercury mines. Yes, that would all wash through. And uh, they had this chute here that it would wash down. The bigger chunks, the rock, the stuff like that that was obviously waste, wouldn't go through the screen. So it came out the end here into this chute that looks like it used to go through this trap door and probably just got washed off down the mountain down there. But all the stuff they wanted dropped through the screen and headed to the next station. Okay, next level. Here the snow's up to the window. Bet you this was a noisy building back in the day. Yeah, to look over here. Yep, here's a um, a drain with another trap door. So whatever whatever washed back out of this, so we could drain here and down there. Yep. Trap door here. Look at the log base of the building. Jeez, that's cool. 
and then they augered. Maybe that's to get rid of like the sand and like fine part of dirt out of it. Hey, and then took the metals up here. Dumped that into here, which would have gone to the next hopper. So this, this whole area we're in up here is full of these mines. That was a good save. I totally put my hand out to stop you, even though I'm like five feet away. Good save, or you'd have gone through the hopper. <laughs> I would say take uh, that path. Yeah. As I was saying, this whole area is filled with these these old mines. Yes, yeah, cinnabar, mercury mines. Of course, there's other metals they pull out of the ground too, but they're all over around here. We've explored some of them. My family and I uh, definitely want to explore all of them. But quite a few of them are very well preserved like this. And... Uh, just here to go check out and, and draw things on. Don't do that. Yeah. Okay. Let's go to the side. I was going on to something. I was hitting mice. Yeah, that's, there's nothing to grip between here and there. Ooh. How about I sit down. Yeah, that's a good idea. And then get to that step. And then go down. Okay. Yeah, do that. It's way better. And then what caution. This is all frozen too. I mean, when you drove up here Saturday, adventure is what you're looking for, right? Yep. <laughs> <Okay>. Got it. <laughs> Alright, so this hopper has the gate still on it. So this would have been, I bet you by the time it got here, it was a slurry. Yeah. And this is where they controlled how much came out. And then off went down to the burners. There's another hopper in a steel frame sitting right there that would have been, I don't know if that would have been like outside somewhere or what. Yeah, I don't know. We need to come up here like an old guy who knows everything. Yeah. Because I can make up a lot of stuff, but I don't really know it. Okay, from the mine building over there, I don't know if it came here first or straight down to the burners first. Furnaces, whatever you want to call them, but this might have just been a water holding tank to feed that. I don't know if that would have come all the way over here first. It almost looks a little bit uphill. This was probably a water tank. And then it went down here to the, the hot thing. So in here, there's a whole bunch of concrete like troughs and tanks and all that that we can't fully see. So we'll walk over here so we don't fall into a pit yeah, right there. So the trauma building is right there. So I doubt it went over that tank and came back. I bet it shot straight down from that in the pipes. You can see this is a trough right here and see the pipe through it and then it went right into here. This is the furnace. I don't know what that up there is. I don't know if there's an auger that fed it or what, but they would build the fires down here and start burning off all the stuff they didn't want. And it would come in here. They don't know if there was another tumbler in here to dry it. And then out the other side it went. There's two chambers in this thing. But if we walk by this tree, we'll be able to get over this. Pretty decent. Oh yeah. So, judging by that big hole right there, this big old concrete pad there with big rebar anchor bolts sticking out of it, and the other one right there, I would bet there was another big huge drum right here that it burned everything off in and came down and cooked out all the all the stuff they didn't want and left the mercury and stuff to come out the end down here. Here's your shelter you need. Probably slightly more stable than the brothel. Yeah, just a little. So, oh, you know what this was for? What? Um, this I'm almost certain of. 
this would have been where they backed the carts in and once it came out of the tumbler there was a hopper up above this and they loaded the carts with the with all the processed uh, mercury and stuff right here and then they came out here they stopped at the brothel for some fun and then headed to town with it That's definitely how it went. That's cool. Okay, now we gotta get back to our vehicles. I know for a fact right there where I sunk the Jeep, we don't wanna walk. I would bet. Take a track back? I would almost bet if we went right here, it kinda looks like tracks. Okay. And then turn and went across to where we think it might be the road, mm -hmm. not the culvert. We could hop right onto the road where you're stuck and walk up good. Okay, so I'm kind of thinking between that dip there and that dip there, this is probably the road. So we'll walk right here. And if I disappear, find another path. Oh, this is definitely a road out. So that would make total sense of that whole drainage comes around the building right into there. It is a bit of a low right here. That's where I sunk. And this is all solid and level, and that's a big opening draw right there, like where a culvert come out, and look at the drainage goes all the way down. I should have definitely like noticed that before driving into that. Yeah. That's probably a total sump hole right there. A dip. Yeah, that was dip super dip. not smart. And right back to where we started. Yep. Okay, let's go home. So we parked the truck at the bottom of the hill. It was 20 degrees when we parked the truck. So I just had a sweater on. Then up here up on the mountain, it's much, much colder. So I put a jacket on over my sweater. And now I'm very hot. I need to like take both of them off. Oh good, the Jeep didn't go anywhere. And it'll be even better if it starts. Oh yeah. Last time I was out in these mountains in this area, it didn't do that. Like I said, we were way, way up by the peak. That was bad. We're gonna head up the road. I reset my odometer so that we can see how far it is back to the truck. Uh, because of the reduction of the tracks, whatever that odometer says, we went half that many miles. Just like whatever speedometer is saying, we're going half that speed. Because that's how math works. Okay, time to get loud again. There's the other cabin I was knew was up here. Right there, there's an old uh, old cabin that probably would have been one of the houses for one of the workers up here. Still standing, old log cabin. There is so much of that stuff up in these mountains that I want to explore. We, we, we explored a bit of it, but there's just so much up here. Um, summertime, I'm hoping to spend a lot more time up in this area. It is absolutely beautiful. And there's a herd of wild horses running around up here that uh, it's cool to see. If he bumps it right there and bumps it some throttle, he might make it. Oh, turn downhill. Oh, won't even back up now. Let's go get him. When you were backing up, your front end wasn't pulling. It wasn't like it kicked back into two. Yeah, maybe that's your problem. That's what Yankum ropes are for. Okay. You put it in drive, and then when, I, when this starts to go in here, just start giving a little throttle. And the goal is for you to help as much as you can without letting the rope go slack. Okay. We want to keep some tension, but helping as much as you can. Okay. Like 
I said, unfortunately, I don't have my fancy 360 camera, so uh, we just got to go old school on this. All right. here is really rutted up under the snow is pretty rough coming down and steeper than it looks on camera so I figured we'd have trouble with this spot but since we're already hooked up we can just keep on going right through it oh see this turnout right here there's another mine down in the bottom of the canyon right there I've never hiked down to it but I want to used to get really hot when pulling like this. We are right now at exactly one mile of pulling up this hill. And normally I'd have to be like backing out of it and babying it because it would be getting hot. And uh, ever since uh, Nate and an uh, elite fleet there, they tuned in like the fuel pressures on this thing, changed the fuel pump around and like did a whole like tune up on it. And now, like I said, we're a mile into this pull, pulling pretty steady and it's 205 and it's sitting right there it just stays between 200 and 210 just like these jeeps are supposed to do so uh, I guess when you like know what you're doing it, it helps make an engine run right so that's handy caution curvy road okay this is the top of the hill here so we should be able to unhook and he's fine all the way down from here 4.1 miles on the odometer meaning that was just under a or just over a two mile long pull and this thing set right at 210 at the highest which is right where it's supposed to and this jeep has 230,000 miles on it it's a 1993 100 percent original engine uh everything else the transmission was the original one until a few months ago when nate uh stole it to put it his race jeep and go racing while i was out of town and then he put a rebuilt one back in it. So it's got a fresh transmission, but very, very happy with this thing. All right, let's get this guy unhooked. So, no, I don't roll all this stuff up all nice to put it away because it's all wet now. So I just kind of throw it in there loose so that it can dry out and all that without being like all tight and moldy. And then it also won't freeze in a bundle that I can't get back up done if I have to use it again tonight. So when it's wet like this, it just kind of gets loosely put away. If it's dry, I'll roll it up nice. All right, let's head down the mountain. Yep, sounds good. Hey, I'll back up right here okay. and you go first. Yep. Because if, if you get in any trouble on the downhill, I'm better off behind you to pull you back up onto the road reason for that is uh, the most likely thing to happen going downhill like this is him to get out of the ruts in the front end go off either the bank side or into the ditch and if I'm in front it's much harder to pull him back out of that if I'm behind I can grab right on and pull him back out on the road and off we go Well, the Jeep's back on the trailer. Connor's probably happy to have his truck back. Yep. And uh, I'm going to head back towards home. Thank you guys for watching. Yeah. Thank you. So, like, subscribe. Comment. Yeah, all that stuff on, all that I don't even say. But yep. that, yeah. All of it. You almost know what you're doing. Yeah. Natural. <laughs>